my name is Emily Cannon. I am a learning design consultant. I work at Judge Business School within Executive Education. Um, there are a lot of family members uh, uh, that are autistic or neurodivergent, um, and I'm currently on the pathway to an autism diagnosis. Uh, so that's where I'm at. <laughs> I think it's a really interesting question. Um, I work in a very supportive environment. I work with uh, people that are very open to having conversations. I know one thing that a lot of people that are in a similar situation um, to myself might not be so lucky. Um, so generally speaking, I think if I wasn't working where I am working, I would be hugely worried about the stigma. I think, uh, you know, it's, it's still a thing that people worry about and aren't excited about having somebody that's slightly different and what does that mean to us as an organisation. Um, so I would worry, I think about the stigma and am I going to be hired, am I going to be put into a senior position, am I going to line manage, am I going to be making decisions on a more senior level because there is still the idea that it's a disability and disabled is a bad word and where does that lead people for the future. I think one of the things that we've discussed a lot today is around self-advocacy and advocacy for others around us. Um, we've just had a discussion group and one of the things that we were talking about was what does that look like uh, in a work environment? Because you can't always be the person that's saying this is what I need, this is what I need and it's very easy to become angry and quite rightly, uh, but to become angry and to start to go into you know, a cycle of nobody's listening to me and I need all of these adjustments. So how do we turn that narrative into a conversation? And how do we turn that into something where we can showcase the benefits that this would make, the cost implications, whether that's mental or actual cash, um, of doing these things and the benefits that can come from there? Um, and, you know, how long will it be until this is just another thing? Like people say that they're anxious. Uh, you know, how long until it's an acceptable conversation and where do we go forward with it from there? I think today's been hugely valuable for me. Uh, one of the things that uh, we've discussed a lot um, in my team and the more conversations that we're having with neurodiverse colleagues and also colleagues that aren't neurodiverse but really want to understand because people want to understand how they can support and how, the, you know, the words to say and not to say um, and because I'm still fairly new in my journey of understanding you know, where I am, I think coming to a situation like this where there's people with, obviously I'm talking autism specific, but there's people with ADHD, people who have dyslexia, dyscalculia, dyspraxia, um, depression, things like that, having a really honest and open conversation where you can talk about solutions and also things that are, you know, holding back and, and what are the next steps that we need to be doing as employees, as employers, as organizations and for students and staff, I think is, is hugely beneficial and important.